Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Skarim Zemek and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on the 24th of June. India sees highest single-day spike of 15,968 COVID-19 cases in 24 hours. Local residents criticize Pakistan's fiscal budget, says no relief for them. And Maldives to reopen borders for international tourists from July 15. And now for all the details. In yet another biggest single-day spike, India recorded nearly 16,000 new cases of the novel coronavirus on Wednesday, taking the tally to 456,183. India also saw a spike of 465 deaths due to COVID-19, taking the death toll to 14,476. With the highest single-day spike of 15,968 cases and 465 deaths in the last 24 hours, India's COVID-19 count reached 456,183 on Wednesday. The count includes active cases. Western Maharashtra province remains the worst affected by the infection so far in the country. Meanwhile, the national capital's confirmed coronavirus cases reached 66,602. Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia on Wednesday said he wrote to Interior Minister Amit Shah seeking his intervention in scrapping the new order by Lieutenant Governor Anil Baijal, which requires every coronavirus patient to visit a quarantine centre for clinical assessment to ascertain whether he requires hospitalisation or home isolation. Sisodia said people are facing a lot of problems due to the new system and it should be scrapped immediately. जमीन पे जो हालात हैं उसको देखते हुए मैं एक बार फिर से अमित शाह जी से रिक्वेस्ट करता हूं कि आप इसमें इंटरवीन करिए आपने पहले भी जब पांच दिन वाला मसला हुआ था कि पांच दिन आवश्यक क्वारंटीन कर आदेश एलजी साहब ने दे दिया था उसमें भी आपने इंटरवीन करके उसको पलटवाया था ये जो हर आदमी को क्वारंटीन सेंटर ले जाके उसके वहां चेकअप करने का जो व्यवस्था है इसको भी आपको बदलवाना पड़े मीनवाइल एमिड राइजिंग केसेस Delhi government has turned luxury hotels into isolation facilities for positive patients. Following the order of Delhi High Court earlier this month, around 30 to 35 hotels have been attached to various hospitals in the city and will be at their disposal to capacitate patients. Delhi has stopped hotels from reopening as it might want to convert them into temporary hospitals if there is a big jump in cases. Health experts say India's peak could still be weeks away if not months. India will reduce staff strength in the Pakistan High Commission in New Delhi by 50% and recall a similar number of officials from its commission in Islamabad, India's foreign ministry said on Tuesday amid an ongoing diplomatic row between the two nations. Amid the ongoing diplomatic tussle with Pakistan, India on Tuesday said it will reduce the staff strength in Pakistan High Commission in New Delhi by 50% and would recall half of its officials from Indian High Commission in Islamabad. Raising concerns over the activities of Pakistani officials in India, the Foreign Ministry told Pakistan's charged the affairs to India that their envoys have engaged in acts of espionage and maintained dealings with terror organizations. India also cited the recent example of two Pakistani envoys who were expelled and sent back over charges of spying. It said the recent abduction at gunpoint of two Indian officials and their severe ill-treatment underlines the extent to which Pakistan has gone in that direction. The foreign ministry said the Pakistan's behaviour is not in conformity with Vienna Convention and bilateral agreements on the treatment of diplomatic and consular officials. Rattled by India's decision, Pakistan continued its blame narrative against New Delhi on the Kashmir issue. In a statement, Pakistan's foreign office claimed that they always function within the parameters of international law and diplomatic norms. Meanwhile, Pakistan's foreign minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi said that they will also reduce the staff strength in the Indian High Commission in Islamabad by 50%. Moving on. 
a local politician in Pakistan administered Kashmir, has criticized Prime Minister Raja Farooq Haider Khan and his Pakistan Muslim League party for not fulfilling any of the promises made during 2016 elections. He said the government has now started development projects like construction of roads only to gain votes in the upcoming elections. A local politician in Pakistan administered Kashmir has blamed Prime Minister Raja Farooq Haider Khan and his Pakistan Muslim League party for not fulfilling any of their promises made during the 2016 elections and have now started road constructions to woo the voters. The local leaders from Hatian Bala town said the government's focus is only on the upcoming elections and they are not interested in serving the people. आजाद कश्मीर के मौजूदा वजीरे आजम ने अपनी इस कॉन्स्टिट्यूंसी में जो इलेक्शन 2016 में वादे किए थे उन वादों को उन्होंने बिल्कुल पसे पुष्ट डाला और आज आखिरी साल चंद किलोमीटर सड़कें देकर लोगों को फिर अगले साल होने वाले इंतखाबात के लिए अपनी जानब उनकी तवज्जो दिलाई है पीपल ऑफ पाकिस्तान एडमिनिस्ट्रेट कश्मीर हैव बीन वेटिंग फॉर ईयर्स नाउ for a better administration that could work for their development. However, the corruption and ignorance in the system has become a major challenge for the growth of the region under Pakistan's occupation, leaving its future in dark. In news from Pakistan, locals in Pakistan's largest city of Karachi, while criticizing government, have said that the recently announced budget for the year 2020-21 has nothing to offer to the general public and is beyond understanding of all. Pakistani government in its fiscal budget has allocated more funds to the defense sector than to its health sector, which has drawn major criticism at the time of coronavirus pandemic. Locals in Pakistan's largest city of Karachi have said the federal government's fiscal budget for the year 2020 and 21 announced earlier this month has nothing to offer to general public and is beyond everybody's understanding. People said since the entire world is facing an uncertain period due to the COVID-19 pandemic and Pakistan is also receiving aid from international organizations, they were expecting major tax relaxations from the budget. But to their disappointment, nothing of that sort happened. बजट जिन्होंने पढ़ा उनकी भी समझ में नहीं आया होगा उन्होंने पढ़ा क्या है बजट है क्या उनको खुद समझ में नहीं आया जिन्होंने बजट बनाया है इतने फाइनेंस हमारे डिपार्टमेंट है सब कुछ है लेकिन उनके खुद समझ में नहीं है बजट उन्होंने दिया क्या है किसी को समझ में नहीं आया क्या फायदा है आवाम को क्या फायदा है बेनिफिट कुछ भी नहीं है आवाम को आवाम जैसे कल रुल रही थी आज भी रुल रही है एक्सपर्ट्स हेड अर्लियर सेट दी गवर्नमेंट शुड एलोकेट अ ग्रेटर शेयर ऑफ दियर न्यू बजट टूवर्ड्स हेल्थ केयर as the pandemic in Pakistan is almost getting out of control. At this time, we have seen the people of the government that there was a small job of the Tajir. Our job was to give a relief to the government. Because at this time, it was from the WHO and the IMF. And the other things that we have done in the world, which we have done in the world, we have done the relief. All the things that we have done in our country also got the relief. Pakistan has allocated more funds to the defense sector than to its health sector at a time when there is already a lack of proper medical facilities and personal protection equipment for medical staff amid virus outbreak in the country. As of Wednesday, there were 188,926 coronavirus cases in Pakistan with 3,755 associated deaths. Moving on, Afghanistan on Tuesday confirmed 324 new COVID-19 cases, bringing the total number of the patients in the country to 29,481. Meanwhile, the health authorities have spent 36.7 million US dollars for the coronavirus response out of a total of 155.7 million US dollars allocated by the Afghan government for this purpose. The Afghan Ministry of Public Health on Tuesday confirmed 324 new COVID-19 cases, bringing the total number of the patients in the country to 29,481. As of Wednesday, the total number of cases stands at 29,481, including 618 deaths. According to the ministry, the total number of people recovered from the virus reached 9,260 after 419 patients recovered since early Monday.
So far, 66,800 tests have been conducted since February across the country. The 24 hours have passed, there are 953 tests in the country. One of these tests is the case of 324 cases. Health authorities have spent 36.7 million U.S. dollars for the coronavirus response out of a total of 155.7 million U.S. dollars allocated by the Afghan government for this purpose. The majority of this amount has been used for the purchase of health equipment and the construction and upkeep of hospitals, according to the ministry. The Maldives President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli has announced that the Indian Ocean Island country will open its borders on July 15 after almost a four months of closure due to the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. The Maldives President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli announced in his address to the nation on Tuesday that his country will reopen its borders for international tourists on 15 July after almost four months of closure due to the outbreak of the global pandemic COVID-19. Resorts, life abodes and hotels located at uninhabited islands will be open for tourists from July 15, 2020. Guest houses and hotels located at inhabited islands will be open from August 1. The Ministry of Tourism also posted a video on Twitter with the caption, We are back on July 15, 2020. The guidelines for reopening the tourism sector was also released by the ministry giving comprehensive information for all sectors across the tourism industry on their standard operating procedures as well as important information to tourists. The country had closed its borders on March 27 to stop the spread of the virus that resulted in impacting its largely tourism-dependent economy. Maldives has a total of 2,217 COVID-19 confirmed cases, out of which 1,813 recovered and active numbers stands at 394. Out of the total COVID-19 cases, 1,442 were foreigners, while 775 were from the Maldives. Farmers in India, Jammu and Kashmir have started the pruning of mulberry trees to boost cocoon production as the coronavirus lockdown has eased in the Northern Territory. Pruning is important for good quality leaves, which affects the quality of silk produced by silkworms. Farmers in Mirgand village of India's Jammu and Kashmir have started the pruning of mulberry trees to boost cocoon production as the coronavirus lockdown has eased in the Northern Territory. Pruning is important for good quality leaves, which affects the quality of silk produced by silkworms. The mulberry cocoon reared in Jammu and Kashmir is one of the best quality in Asia. It yields a very fine fibre which is often compared with the best quality in the world. Our country is very important in our country. And there are two components of it. One is the seed of the seed and the other is the seed of the seed. The seed of the seed is only the seed of the seed of the seed of the seed. और इसकी पत्ते की नशुनोमा के लिए जरूरी है कि हम इसको रेगुलरली प्रूनिंग कर पाएंगे। According to farmers, timely rainfall and organic fertilizers have increased the mulberry production in Jammu and Kashmir this year. पत्ते की क्वालिटी भी इस साल बहुत अच्छा है। इससे हमारे रेशम की पैदावार भी बहुत अच्छा होगा सर। और भी जो हमें फायदा है वो भी मिल रहा है सर। और घर में बैठे-बैठे हम तंग आ गए थे। Actually Jammu and Kashmir, just like other regions of India, was under lockdown since March as a precautionary measure to curb the spread of the deadly coronavirus. Economic activities are now allowed to reopen across the country as part of government's Unlock 1.0 plan. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline. And follow us on Twitter at S Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.